If you're in the trail running space or you consider yourself a bit of a through hiker, Ultra as a brand are probably someone that you're quite familiar with, especially for their Lone Peak models. They're now on the Lone Peak 8. I've got two pairs of Lone Peak 7s, absolutely love them, and can't wait to try the 8s. However, they're not the shoes that we're talking about in today's video. We're actually going to be talking about the Timp 5s, which are the fifth generation of the Timps, unsurprisingly. They're new for Spring Summer 24, and they've made a few alterations to them that have made some noticeable improvements. And I'll be honest, they might leave my Lone Peaks behind because so far I found them really comfortable. We'll get a little bit more into exactly what the Timps are, what they've created here, and where they kind of fit into Ultra's range from us. But they're a running shoe. Surely we should do a little bit of running, right? Serious content, serious running content. First stop on our sightseeing tour today though, the Suckstone. It's quite a big boulder. Let's go and have a look. Squelchy. Oh, it's a big boulder. Got to resist the urge to climb it, although I don't think I'll get very far. Didn't slip. Just so wet out, it's not the shoes. Now seemed like a good opportunity to pull over and talk a little bit more about what the Timp 5 actually is. So apologies for this one being a bit muddy, but we are out in the woods. I've been for a little bit of a run and I've been using these for a few weeks. So within Ultra's range, they have the Lone Peak, which sits at 25 mil stack height. All of the shoes that they do are zero drop or very low drop. All the three that we stock in their running range are zero drop. You then have a 29 mil with the Timp 5 and then the 33 mil with the Olympus 5. Now for me, I've really found in using these that these are a little bit more of a sweet spot for me. If I'm running on road sections, I find that the Lone Peaks, while still comfortable, could do with a little bit of extra cushioning, and that's where these tints really come in. Now Ultra have done something really fun with these, don't quite know how they've done it, but despite being a little bit more cushioned than the Lone Peaks, they're actually lighter. They come in at 277 grams. That will likely be for a size 9. Uh, it's usually a size 8 or size 9 that they measure these in. So my size 12s won't be quite the same weight, they'll be a little bit heavier. But in practice, they've been able to keep the materials nice and durable as well. These ones are non-Gore-Tex. We also stock in both men's and women's the standard Timp 5 and we do a Timp 5 mid, which is Gore-Tex. It's also a little bit higher. But 277 grams for these guys is really quite phenomenal. They feel really comfortable on, really cushioned, and they work really well in these trail conditions although I would like to try them on some drier trails soon, so we've got to hope for some better weather because the Vibram outsole, if you can actually see the Vibram logo there, there's a little bit, there we go. Uh, you've got a Vibram Mega Grip outsole on these and Vibram Mega Grip is a fantastic compound that works really well. So Ultra use Vibram on a few of their models as well as their own rubber as well. But the Vibram Mega Grip on these is a noticeable improvement in wetter conditions compared to the Lone Peaks, which use Ultra's own rubber at least in my personal opinion and preference there anyway, I would go for a Vibram outsole for when it gets a bit wetter. However, as I say, because of the British weather, I haven't been able to try these in dry conditions, but I think they'll do just fine there too. Moving on to the midsole, you then have an Egomax midsole cushion, and this is supremely soft, but still really supportive. So running in these, I do feel that they are really rather comfortable and work really well. And the only other major thing is when it comes to Ultra is the fit. So you can probably see the shape here, they are in their standard fit, which is also the same as the Lone Peaks. I would say in practice, the Lone Peaks feel just a touch wider in the toe box than these, 
Uh, but these are still plenty wide enough. They still get that natural foot spread, which is what Ultra are all about, along with their zero drop. The Olympus goes over to their classic fit, which is just a little bit different in shape again as well. But the standard fit in these works really well. Other features to consider on the Timp 5 that come on all of Ultra's trail shoes. Uh, you do get the little loop here and a Velcro tab Velcro at the back there so that you can attach a trail gaiter. So if you are using them where there might be a little bit of scree or something like that, or you really don't want any ingress into the shoe from physical debris, which can be quite uncomfortable, then you can attach a trail gaiter to that, which is a nice little feature. You've also got dual eyelets at the top here. So I've laced them into the rear one. I haven't done a full runner's loop on these, which I have to on some shoes because I've got quite narrow heels despite having enormous flippers. Uh, but these have enough hold on them in that heel cup just in that rear position so it's just a nice quality of life feature to have there right i better put this back on and then carry on my run because if anyone approaches i look like a bit of a weirdo holding my shoe kneeling down behind a rock so it turns out going for a run in the woods when it is both windy and has been incredibly wet does result in potentially falling over don't know whether you can see my muddy hand there you might see a blooper at the end, if you're lucky. But let's get back to it. No point in complaining about it. It's a trail, so they're gonna be wet and muddy, right? We're in England. Now this might be where my root choice possibly starts to let me down a little bit because I can see an awfully see, wet patch which again is no fault of the Timps. Conditions are absolutely bogging and I think I'd only be able to stand upright if I was in something with incredibly deep lugs and even then, knowing my luck, I would also probably still stack it because it is quite wet underfoot. So I'll be taking this section very slowly. <laughs> anyway, onwards, I guess. It's really helpful when your watch tells you that you've done the next lap. Oh, squelch! Parkour! And not where you're supposed to be going. Oh. Also, another pro tip because I don't seem to be able to follow it myself. Don't wear white socks when trail running. Unless you don't want this to be white anymore. Because I think I'm about to have that problem. Go down there. Oh no. That is one way to christen a pair of shoes to show that we are actually testing them properly. And also, don't wear white socks. <laughs> Onwards.
Well, there you have it. Potentially a slightly chaotic inside look into the new Ultra Timp 5s. Can't wait to try these on some dry trails throughout the summer because I think they will really shine there. If you'd like to shop the entire range, there'll be a link down in the description, including both men's and women's. Just a side note, Ultra, if you want to make the women's pink and green colour in a size 12 for me, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions or you'd like to see more content like this or not see more content like this, as always, pop a comment down in the description and we will get back to you. I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully I don't stack it because it is really wet and not many shoes would keep me upright in some of the trails that we've got going on here. So let's find out. Oh yeah, there it is. Yep, see what I mean? Very. <laughs> 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 oh no, that's definitely going to be a blooper. <sighs> we'll try that again. <laughs>